YouTube what's going on. We got the green light cars to look at. And uh, really nice. Pretty recent releases. These have been out probably for the current month. They've been hitting shelves. Also the online retailers. Uh, we're going to look at Matador, Nova. We're going to look at some square bodies. And awesome, awesome cars. We're going to continue our Plymouth uh, collection of wagons too. So I got the other two that just came out. So we're going to look at those as well. But let's take a look at the Vintage Ad Series 3. And we're going to look at one of my favorite Chevys. Is the uh, Nova. Basically a third generation body style Nova. This is a 68 car. Came out in 68. They're promoting. It's actually a really famous ad. That they did on the Chevy. You can see they were talking about their 350 on this one not a big block I love the green I was excited I'm probably gonna get more of these so let's gonna take a look at this one we'll compare it to our red one this body style has been out and uh, other iterations they have the Beverly Hills cop Axel Foley's car kind of done up in that weathered appearance uh, we got a Copo car that's basically identical to this one and then they also have a couple of Yanko cars, uh, like auction cars, like uh, I think it was Mika Man, Barrett Jackson, uh, releases, things like that. But, look at this thing. This is what I was waiting for. Love factory stock cars. It's got a, just an amazing paint job on it. I think they did a great job. Take a look. This one, unlike the red one, it's got the molding, the trim molding on the side of the body. And the wheels are just perfect. Red line tires. Let's take a zoom. These cars came with all sorts of motors and transmissions. They dropped the station wagon for Nova. It's because it was so close to the Malibu Chevelle size. There's our 350. They'd call out the engine size up there on these cars. Great casting. This one doesn't rely on the windows to do the, the the trim for the windows. Take this pen here. This is all part of the body. Just awesome. I love this casting. It's a great casting. Great metallic paint. As we got the zoom going, you can see the trim right there on the back deck. Let's see if it'll focus a little bit better for us. Yeah. Chevy 2, they were calling it a Chevy 2 SS, but really the Nova was starting to take the name. And this body style, third gen, went up to 1974, and then they kind of changed it after that. And I can't remember if they discontinued the name for a while and then brought it back again. Because, of course, we had that 80s Nova, which was that compact car. Another good highlight of this casting, first of all, it has an opening hood. We've been seeing less and less opening features on green lights castings, but this one, they kept the hood. They did a deep well engine block, dual snorkel air cleaner. You can see your battery up front and your core support and all that, your radiator. So, you know, that could be detail painted if you really wanted to do this car up. Chassis is pretty good, too. This is almost... To the relief of like Auto World. Of course, you got your dual exhaust. Looks like a standard transmission. And then um, they carried on the assembly like the F body cars where you'd have a subframe that bolted onto this body. And it was kind of like body on frame from like this point forward. They kind of bolted in, and you could put your powertrain on that and just kind of made it to the body. It made assembly pretty good. You can see the character lines on this car is great. Roof has this correct dome to it. I mean, it's just a good body. They did a great job. One of my favorites. Look at it next to the red one. I didn't get the cars with the torque thrust wheels. I like the steely Novas, and I think the red and green look pretty good. This almost, the difference too. This has the raised um, fake heat extractors on there. I think they were just trim. They really weren't 
cut out to the open sky or anything like that but it looks like it's like a separate piece but it is painted and they do like a little black stripe around the edge it makes it look like it's a separate piece but it's not but that's raised and this one was just tampoed but that was interesting that was different both supposed to be 68 cars you can see Chevy 2 on the hood emblem a little bit better on the red one so but just awesome I love the way they look I love metallic <laughs> the green car I think the only thing that make it better is it has a black interior I might take it apart and do a dark green just paint that up because hopefully I'll find some more of these Novas and we got chassis number 2274 on this one and again I showed the advertising series 3 pretty cool we're gonna look at the matador next and there's your cars in the set um i looked at all of them in person uh, they're kind of expensive getting them retail they're like almost two dollars more than what you get online so online's good except that it's like you're buying an extra car because if you do it right the shipping's like basically seven to ten dollars if it's flat rate so and you get sales tax, but you can buy these for about five fifty or thirty dollars a set, um, plus tax and shipping. So it's kind of back and forth. I kind of like the finding them in person because I am kind of lucky. There's a couple of places that sell these, so I try to go that route. But sometimes, like square body trucks or certain muscle cars, are hard to find. They're kind of scalped up, but. This one I came across, and there's many more, and uh, we'll look at the Fox body. Uh, they did the uh, basically the first gen Mustang Fox body, the 79 cars, uh, an 80, 81, things like that. So they have that body that came out, so we'll look at that soon. I'll probably get one to, uh, eventually. I think it's a King Cobra car. It's red. What do they call it? 82, uh, it's just an 82 GT. It's got like a hood bird on it, though, or something. So this is a 73 AMC Matador. This is the last year that they looked pretty good. They got kind of funky after that. We'll look at that in a second. But you could see how AMC was just kind of playing the middle here. With the, they're like, you know, it's a great car. You know, we don't have to change it that much. Uh, you know, quality vehicle. And that's about it. We're not going to try to waste your money with like 100 different cars to choose from at the dealer. I love it. So these are flat, and I like to cut them out on the back, and they turn into kind of like wall boards. And I haven't put that up with permanent tape or anything. I can take them off, and I feel like once I get a better shelf set up, each car will be in front of its advertisement. I think that's a fun way to display them. So we'll take a look at this. This has got wide white walls on it, which is kind of funny. It's almost like a, a show car. Put wide white walls on a cost-effective vehicle obviously you could see in the advertisement that it was skinny white walls it, it seemed like they retooled wheels for this car so I really think it looks great it's got that big hubcap this would also translate if they make the fuselage Chryslers some other early like Plymouth satellite cars you can use a wheel cover like this it kind of had a wheel cover like that I think uh, I have a a lot of these coronets because they're like the factory stock cars i think this would look good here too so i'll probably let's see yeah so that would look pretty good but we'll get to it we'll get to it i gotta find more of these but uh 73 so small bumper really the only thing they added to it was like the little um these little bumperettes to it but basically the same i got a this is, should be my 71 car so you can see basically just a little bit of grill changes but same car now i was complaining about the windows they were doing too much busy work with it well this one doesn't have any of it so it looks better but it's missing the quarter trim here which actually i could fill in but you can see how much better the windows do look without all the extra silver tampoing. And uh, black flat, or basically flat black roof to be like the soft top, like your vinyl. 
AMC's door handles. Love it. They had that pull from behind style. They also didn't slab side this car. They actually have some curve to the body, which is missing in a lot of castings. So I really appreciate that. You can see how it follows the wheel wells real well. The other thing I was telling you about on this car, how narrow the track was. And it needed a wheel change. Well, they did put pretty good back spacing on this. You can see the post is bigger. And you can see how much better the car looks when the wheels are in the right position. So, really, really nice looking car. I love it. Love the paint. Very 80 or 70s looking. I just love it. It's like this orange copper tone paint. Let's look at the taillights. This was another fine. I mean, the casting is pretty new, so very little issues with casting marks on this car at all I love the separate bumpers it's good that green light tries to put a couple of extra um, tooling pieces into their castings it makes it a lot better even though they paint the headlights it's a little bit seems like a little bit more finer detail the black wash is pretty good on the grill you can see how nice this car is you can see this one. I tried to do the earlier one. I just think it's a great, great car. Really, never had AMC, like, four-door car cast in 164 scale before. I mean, there might have been one, but not in my memory. So, I love these cars, and they're great to have in scale. So, very excited to have it. And again, let's look at the quote-unquote... Uh, well, I'll let you make up your mind about what that front end looks like, but it's kind of crazy. They had to make a change, and this really went up to 78, 79, uh, this, like this, and they would do special uh, trim packages, like uh, some uh, clothing designers or whatever would make trim packages on their cars. Let's see, I'm kind of just blah. The car got real blah. <laughs> this is a great looking car. Very hard to find one. I mean, they made them, I don't know, 10, 20, 30,000 of these cars every year or something like that. Maybe more. Uh, but they weren't on the 300,000 or 125,000 scale that the big three were doing with their cars. So finding a clean one in real life, not easy. But they, they're just tremendous. And actually... Not really that expensive, even if you find a low-mile one. Because, again, it's a four-door. No one wants one of those. <laughs> All right. Let's look at some square bodies. Then we're going to get to the Plymouth cars, which are very exciting. You can see it in the background there. So, another vintage ad series car. Let's round out some of the highlights of the set. Again, I didn't get everything. So, this looked great. They were kind of toting. Oh, look at that picture. Well, you don't get very the wheels and tires and ride height. You don't get the factory accurate stance, but that can be fixed. And there's ways to do it. Uh, basically, you got to get you got to use Auto World wheels and tires on these things on the two wheel drives. I mean, four wheel drive ones. You can do whatever you want because it's kind of like. There's all sorts of wheels and tires you put on a four-wheel drive, but two-wheel, if you want a factory stock, definitely do not use these type of wheels. So I did drill them out because they were all not Dell had flashing in the holes on the wheel, so I cleaned those up. But this is exactly how the back spacing and ride height is from, from green light. It's such a shame because look at that grill. So the second-gen square body trucks that went to 87, you can see they do such a good job it's just the casting is let down really by the right height and you can get past the fact that it's got very light mold lines in it it still would be better if it was just raised a little bit but we've been through this truck before this casting closed hood they have this hood riveted on because they would change the hood in it um to put like a blower and stuff on the four wheel drive, so it's kind of why you see the difference there. But it's still great. I mean, factory colors and all that. Um, if you find wheels like this, 
which I put on my costume. The uh, I still got it. I built the chassis for a green light long bed. You can see how much better it looks with factory wheels and tires than which are provided by Auto World. Uh, I think that would really help these out. So. Again, one of these guys might have to sacrifice themselves for this one. Just because there's no one really doing the late 80s ones. So, and this is a cool one. Uh, the other one we use, of course, we looked at that before, is this one. Which is very nice looking. And again, if you have it raised, at least it looks more normal. So, definitely worth kind of playing with these a little bit. Because there is... The car is there, the accuracy is pretty much there, you just gotta work with it a little bit. You could definitely kinda turn out something fun. Like this one too, like long beds. Alright. So we looked at this truck. We've seen these before, I've talked about them. Of course I have other videos on those trucks. This one is great just because the colors and the ride height are perfect on it. And this is the 84. GMC Jimmy. This is a very hard one to find. I got this online because I saw a few of these releases already and this is never there. And I've been early to a lot of these picks out there in Pegland when you're trying to find them. Uh, and we looked at the uh, the Ford in this set earlier. In an earlier video. Well this is the other one. This is probably one of the better schemes. This is up there with this color scheme that I like a lot for the 80s. The uh, A-Team set that's coming out uh, is going to have this. It looks like the lowered one, but it's going to be white with the red. And that's a very iconic color scheme too. So, excited to get that one. Hopefully I can get a few more of these chassis. And I'll be able to put more of them lifted. Because this is the way they should look, I think. I mean, if Greenlight's going to do it and they have to not retool wheels and tires and uh, all that stuff, then just make all the blazers look like this then, I guess. This is the GMC called Sierra Classic. Grill is amazing. It's unlike when M2 does GMC grill. They basically have a Chevy and a GMC grill share the same <laughs> data. This one's actually a real GMC grill that Greenlight does, so... Very excited to have this in the collection. Let's take a little zoom here. Some of the highlights. Separate bumpers. You've got Sierra Classic and that big script on that rear quarter. Uh, tail lights are done pretty good. They're painted, but they have the chrome uh, surround, which is good. I like that. Backspacing on their lifted is pretty good. Down again, this is green lights separate axles they kind of tack on so a lot of times they're crooked and stuff they're pretty decent on this a lot of flash on these tires though so i'm gonna have to sand this off look at all that so the wheels are decent if there's any flash in there i can get it out with the pin vise drill set twist drills but removable top i'm gonna glue this down in place i'm not gonna really open that up anymore but i wanted to show it on camera it's typical they give you the spare in there and all that. In the, in the basically the second row seat. So I love it. Very nice truck. Probably would have had a 305 in it, you know, in that trim level. But they had 350s and things uh, in the mid 80s. Most, this truck, like this trim level, is most likely automatic. You can see that transmission pan. Automatic tranny. It's funny because this is really like a two wheel drive chassis. <laughs> There's no transfer case or anything. Uh, Thirty, what is it? Thirty sixty three serial number. Just a good looking truck. Looks great with this. Looks real good. I think that looks great. All right, let's get to the last of the vehicles today. We're gonna look at Plymouth cars, a sixty nine, and now we get to look at the seventy. Finally, this sixty nine is great. It's a satellite, but they also did a Belvedere, and, and during this time period, 68 to I think 70, yeah, 70 was this platform, 71 changed. Uh, they had Belvedere and satellite. Satellite was, I guess, more higher trim level on these cars. Belvedere 
would have like a one and a Belvedere two. And I think, it, I don't know if that carried that way to 70, but certainly in 68, I believe I read that. So this is supposed to be a satellite car. That's a 69. So second year for the body, they got the full wheel covers. Again, very chromey. And we looked at that on the Brady Bunch car. Yeah, oop. I think that was a pocket car today. That's why the tire got messed up. But uh, I'd say that I'd want to flatten that to make it look a little bit more like aluminum or that spun steel instead of chromed. I love the white. This car came assembled very nicely and neatly. None of that greasy stuff that we're used to seeing on Sun Green Light stuff. Casting is good. This seems to be like the team that did like the club wagon and things because it's a very neat uh, casting. Um, yes, I did compare it to maybe a larger M2 in the last video, but again, I feel like this is a little narrow. Uh, this might be to scale for 164th. I just feel I've seen pictures of this, it's a little bit more straight up and down, too, from that area. Uh, it is tall and square like this, though. That's for sure. Really nice, delicate casting along the rear wheel well, too. You can see how close that tire can get to the body, and, and it still rolls freely. Drop-down tailgate, black interior. V8s were pretty much standard on wagons. You really, I don't think you can get the six-cylinder on these cars. So you get the small V8 all the way up to the big ones. Uh, 273, 361s, what else did I see, 318s, 383, 426, 440, were all, I guess, options at some point, and let's look at the other one, so we're going to look at this here Belvedere car, so low option car, which would make sense because this is supposed to be a fleet car, it looks a little generic because I think they're mimicking what was in the brochure that year for 70, I think the I used to look at police brochures, I like these cars, and pretty much that's how Chrysler had their lettering. They kind of did that, kind of like three color brochure, like it wasn't full color yet. Sometimes they'd have two colors and they'd do these generic police cars, like with the, you know, just police on the side. So I think that's kind of like what that kind of car is. Really cool siren on top, very period has a tan interior, so it's kind of unusual with the blue. It seems a little funny in this car. It's very light. I don't know if it's exactly... It's almost like it's just plastic. There's no color on it. But the 70 taillights, as you can see, are different. Which is correct. And, of course, the front end. So, really, two new tooling. Um, even though this is based on... You know, they're based on each other. You can see how square the shoulder is on this front quarter where this one has a rib on the top. So they did all the subtle changes. The 70 basically was the same car, but they square shouldered a lot of the, the trim on the car. Uh, it, it got very squared up before they changed to the, the fuselage cars of 71. So it's neat. It did a, it did a good job on it. You can see how flat the front end is compared to these. So, just a great car. It's nice to see with the two-tone treatment. Uh, they would have them like that, especially, you know, different climates. They like the white roof on service vehicles. So, there we go. We looked at a few vehicles. Mm. I think we got more stuff coming. Um, definitely have the new four-wheel drive M2 chassis I'm going to disseminate and look around for, uh, with with you. All in YouTube land. That's coming. I'm just doing a little bit of looking on it. But we got some good cars today. We sure did. More to come. Thank you for all your wonderful comments and uh, new subscriptions. Uh, feel free to catch up uh, with previous videos. We got a lot of content on the channel. And uh, thanks for watching. Hope everybody's doing great. Till next time.